Today we're going to be looking at a poem from the Love and Relationships Cluster. We're going to be looking at Winter Swans by Owen Shears. Now this poem is actually one of my favourite Love and Relationships poems because it's really romantic. It's about a couple and they're experiencing some kind of conflict as they go for a walk together by a lake you can see there is some tension in between them. However, when they see the swans, the mood between them immediately kind of gets better, it improves. So nature has a positive impact on their relationship. Let's read it. The clouds had given their all, two days of rain and then a break in which we walked, the waterlogged earth gulping for breath at our feet as we skirted the lake, silent and apart until the swans came and stopped us with a show of tipping in unison, as if rolling weights down their bodies to their heads, they halved themselves in the dark water, icebergs of white feather, paused before returning again like boats riding in rough weather. They mate for life, you said as they left, porcelain over the stilling water. I didn't reply, but as we moved on through the afternoon light, slow stepping in the lake's shingle and sand, I noticed our hands that had somehow swum the distance between us and folded one over the other, like a pair of wings settling after flight. Now in this poem, I think there are lots of very beautiful quotations that you could analyze. I'm gonna try and stick to three, three of the juiciest ones. And by juicy, I mean quotations that have interesting language devices, some words that you can zoom into. So if this poem comes up in your exam, you are able to write at least three detailed paragraphs about it. I'm gonna try not to get carried away and give you more than three. Let's see how it goes. From the beginning of the poem, the poem begins with the quotation, the clouds had given their all, two days of rain and then a break in which we walked. I actually want to analyze this quotation. So copy it down on your sheets of paper. Let's make some notes. Immediately, there is pathetic fallacy where the weather reflects the mood and the two days of rain symbolizes the turbulence the couple has been through in their relationship. Rain is not positive weather, so obviously they're going through quite a hard time. Now it's interesting that the poet specifies two days. It could have been three, it could have been five, it's two. It's almost as if nature is advocating and encouraging everything to be in couples. The personification of the clouds who had given their all shows that even the clouds must be drained and exhausted after giving so much rain which mirrors how the speaker feels emotionally drained after all of the fighting. The break that they talk about is like a moment of respite. It stops raining, so the couple goes for a walk and it says, which we walked, which obviously has alliteration of W. I'm gonna say that alliteration of W, all the question words start with W, who, what, when, why, where. So maybe it's kind of like their unresolved issues with each other, the questions they still want to ask each other. Now, obviously you can see the sentence isn't on one line. It, that sentence breaks and goes on to the next line and the next line. So there's enjambment there. Structurally, that could symbolize the ongoing rain, or maybe it could represent the kind of ongoing problems in their relationship. From there, it says, the waterlogged earth gulping for breath at our feet. The image of the waterlogged earth suggests that the earth is like filled with water. So almost like in a negative way, this couple perhaps feels a bit suffocated within this relationship. And then there's more personification because it says the earth is gulping for breath. Again, connoting the struggle it is to maintain this relationship. It's near to its end and therefore they are very aware that the earth is at the bottom of their feet, nearly separated from their body. Then it says, as we skirted the lake, silent and apart, which is a really sad image. There's a strong idea of their separation and the conflict in between them. The couple is skirting the lake, which means walking around the edges as if they're skirting around each other, aware that they could fall into the water any minute 
and their relationship would drown. The adjectives silent and apart simply and concisely demonstrate the emotional distance between them. Their communication has completely stopped. Until the swans came and stopped us with a show of tipping in unison as if rolling weights down their bodies to their heads. I love this quotation. I think you should copy it down and we should analyze it. The conjunction until is the first indication of a shift. There's a change. The swans come and unexpectedly, nature has performed a much needed intervention. And it says they stop us, which is an inclusive pronoun, us. So he still sees them together as a unit and a partnership. It's almost like the swans are deliberately targeting and stopping this couple and their unison is modeling what is required and juxtaposes the current separation in the relationship. And obviously there's a simile of how the swans go into the lake backwards. And maybe that's showing how the couple must not be scared of delving deep into the problems that they have and they should stop avoiding them and they should face them if they have any chance of a reunion. Then there's the reference to weights. And I think we should zoom into that because I think that is a reference to the burden of the relationship that they're carrying. Sometimes it can feel really heavy, but the swans have learned to deal with it and they should too. It says they halve themselves in the dark water, icebergs of white feather, pause before returning again, like boats riding in rough weather. So the swans basically separate and then they come back together. So there is once again this image of conflict and resolution or disharmony than harmony because the swans halve, look like they're halving because they move away from each other and then they reunite again. So the simile like boats riding in rough weather further shows that the struggle was just like a rough patch, like turbulence, and it was temporary just like boats can usually put themselves right again and so can the swans, and so can this couple. Therefore, the swans almost become like a motif for hope and salvation for the couple, or at least some inspiration that they can fix their issues and their problems can actually resolve. And then we hear someone's voice for the first time. It says, they mate for life, you said, as they left, porcelain over the stilling water. I didn't reply. So inspired by the majestic swans, the speaker's partner breaks the silence and dialogue is used for the first time. Communication has been restored and the casual observation about swans also raises much larger philosophical questions about the natural longevity of relationships. They mate for life. She's just making a really cash kind of like throwaway comment about the swans, but Shears is subtly implying that just like the swans, human relationships should be everlasting. Porcelain is a material that like posh cups and stuff are made from. So the metaphor of describing swans as porcelain over the stilling water obviously describes how elegant and beautiful the swans are, but it also signifies the fragility, how fragile relationships are and how important it is to invest in them through nurture and care and love and communication. Otherwise it will break. So he doesn't reply. But he says, as they moved on through the afternoon light, slow stepping in the late shingle and sand, do you see how the weather changes here? There is no more rain, it's afternoon light. And that brings a little bit of hope, especially with the sibilance, shingle sand, creating this kind of softness. So they're clearly on a path towards resolving their previous tension. And he says, my favorite bit, I noticed our hands that had somehow swum the distance between us. It's very cute. They're holding hands. And I actually want to analyze this and the next line together. So write it down. Their hands have swum the distance between them. It's a metaphor, not swimming, but it symbolizes how they're now both emotionally and physically closer. And the speaker has simply noticed this. So it wasn't planned. The swans have inspired this reconciliation in a very natural and spontaneous way. There's the Zura here, the commas, the pauses, which kind of shows this cute hesitation because one wrong move could easily 
dissolve the relationship. Then there's sibilant in somehow swum, which creates this really peaceful tone, which is maybe the sense of relief that they're feeling. And it says their hands and folded over one another, like a pair of wings settling after flight. So the final lines use a lot of references to the swans. The couple has almost become a mirror image of the swans in their acceptance of one another. And when it says one over the other, it creates this idea of protection and they don't need to fly away from each other anymore because they have truly settled, which foreshadows that this relationship will last and the conflict has resolved. Now, structurally, the poem is written in six irregular three-line stanzas. So irregular means there are some long lines and there are some short lines. And then in the end, there's a couplet. So this maybe emphasizes the disharmony and the conflict in the couple at the beginning. However, after the moment of reconciliation in the poem, the final stanza is a couplet, symbolic of them coming back together again. Therefore, in this poem, the conflict is only temporary. So that's the analysis of language and structure done. However, in your exam, you can't just analyze language and structure. You also need to, to get those grades seven to nines, bring in context and writer's message. So what was going on during the time this poem was written? Context. What was going on in the poet's life? And therefore, what message was the poet trying to give the reader? Why, what was the point? Why did you write this poem in the first place? Some interesting context points for Winter Swans are, Owen Shears is a Welsh poet born in 1974. So Winter Swans is a contemporary poem. That's why it feels kind of, it's easier to understand. Shears' poems mostly feature landscapes and settings to enhance the meaning. And this poem was taken from a collection called Skirid Hill. This can literally be translated as Shattered Mountain. So the word Skirid is Welsh and can also be interpreted as divorce or separate, summing up the key themes in this poem. So there you have it, a full analysis of a love and relationships poem, Winter Swans. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do give it a like and don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this series.